Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France, starting in 1920. It's the very end of 1953, and before we head into the penultimate year of this game, let's little take a little look at the year in perspective. So it's obviously been a war and then a peace with all the um, resultant hits to spending and particularly... Uh, getting our spending in line uh, after the peace. We've finished off our two Charles Etois battleships and I've started five new light cruisers on the grounds that they'll be finished in time and might be useful in the upcoming war that I'm very much hoping will be created. I've also uh, brought in a couple of replacement destroyers for the two that my ally sank. It's been moderate progress on techs, but I imagine we're getting to the end of the tech tree, so that'll be right. A um, couple of uh, increases in tensions, so although we started off at peace, went to war, and then have been back to peace, things have uh, moved on a little bit. I'm happy to have war with Germany or Russia, or of course, everyone's favourite kicking bag, um, Italy. Japan, no thank you. And our finances have obviously crashed, but have raised up uh, a little bit. Just a reminder to the um, statistics for the air war in the last war, um, very much skewed by the fact that they never found us. <laughs> that will uh, That's the most effective form of air defense, it turns out. We go back to our main scream and have a little look at what the next year is going to bring. One of our minor allies is threatened by a neighbor. So of course we are going to back it unconditionally and see if that's going to annoy anyone. A new fast torpedo bomber. Egypt still rebelling from Britain. A few scrappings and a few commissionings. Nothing too interesting. Okay. So Italy and the Soviet Union are looking like our most likely uh, partners in war. I'm just going to lower the Germans and increase those two. Actually, I will keep I'll keep it all at high because high S, uh, intelligence is uh, tension provoking. Now, I do have a slight balance and that will only increase and I'm wondering what to do with that. If I go to the build screen, um, you can see the destroyer would take 16 months, so I could build a few more of those. Um, I could build a few more of the light cruisers at 22 months. Remain, remember, I've got 24 months left. The Ile de France is, nope. The Rhone, I would take exactly 24 months. Charlottois, 30 months, so it's too much. The other thing I could do is just to mobilize the fleet I've got a lot in mothballs um, with poor crew quality. I could mobilize the fleet and have everything at good crew quality and um, be really prepared for any war that kicks off. So I think actually that seems like a good idea. So let's bring everything out of reserve and mothball. I may have to put a few things back in because it may blow the budget. Okay, <laughs> it blew the budget. Um, at least I can do this from a position of um, knowing how much I've got to spend exactly. Okay, so what I've done is I put nothing into mothball, which will at least bring up crew quality from poor to fair. And I've put most of the things that were in mothball into reserve. Um, the Ducan I brought into active fleet, and the rest are. Not as good as I'd like, but better than they were before. And that's used up most of the monthly balance. And into February. New planes, encouraging me to have a little look at new planes. Hmm. That seems to have set the monthly balance from 80 down to nearly minus 2,000. Oh, um, probably all of this extra... Um, but I'm, I'm, I'll keep that going for a bit because I would love it to create some extra tensions. We've got nearly 28,000, so we can run a 2,000 deficit for a while before we have to address that. 
Let's just go to aircraft types. Um, we have a torpedo bomber in progress. We have a new medium bomber, a new fighter, which is coming along very well. Uh, a not bad old fighter, the old dive bomber. So we kind of were thinking about a float plane, but I think a new dive bomber is probably more useful at this point, but we can't until we get this torpedo bomber out of the way. The reason for thinking about the dive bomber is a dive bomber has fighter-like performance, uh, whereas a flying boat, you know, yes, we'll get extra range and things like that, but that doesn't really matter so much. Although having said that, I think I've replaced all of the dive bombers, uh, or nearly all of the dive bombers. Let's just sort by roll. Yeah, I've just got a few left, which I probably want to swap out at a later date. Okay, March. So what's going to happen here? Suppress all propaganda. Meet with them and talk about important strong navy, which isn't a good thing. Do nothing. Oh, well, we don't want to minus the budget. So, um, yes, okay. Uh, that may raise unrest, but we're kind of okay with that. And a spy from the Soviet Union. <laughs> Maximum publicity. And a breakthrough in modern control systems for torpedoes. That's nice. A little bit more tension in the Soviet Union, up to eight. Not as much as perhaps I'd hoped, but still going in the right direction. Through to May. Uh, 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 uh. Authorizes an increase in naval spending. Well, thank you very much. And float plane data. Well, top speed 214, radius of 300. Let's just see our float plane. We yeah. are, and me. Maximum radius, yes, comparable. So there's just not much you can do with giant great big floats hanging around. Well, that was a fairly big lift in um, in budget of two and a half thousands, which has taken our minus two thousands into a plus. So that's quite nice. I'll just see if I can take out, oops. There we go. I think I've got one of my carriers in reserve, so let's make that active. And maybe uh, ooh, make that active and that one active. Yeah, we want our Charlotte's active. Indeed, a Liberté active as well. All the big boys. Just some heavy cruisers and stuff like that to worry about. Just some heavy cruisers and things like that to worry about. And a disarmament conference. Hmm. I'm thinking no. So, uh, yeah, more prestige, more tension. Uh, let's just reject any of that. Some nice radar, which is lovely. Uh, ignore that. Tensions with the Soviet Union now at 10 which is excellent. And here's the first of our new light cruisers. Uh, yes, let's have some more. Oh, and there we go. New prototypes for torpedo bombers. Well, don't have to study this very hard. The Devotin is the clear winner with the fastest speed and the longest range and perfectly good bomb load compared to everybody else. So that's a yes. And the speed is um, a fair old lift compared to our 1947 Farman. So well worth that. So let's get that underway. And just have a look at... Uh, Dive bombers. Dive bomber. Hmm. Speed. 
as a first priority and then maybe range actually maybe firepower on the grounds that range and bomb load are, are all much of a muchness i.e quite a serious weapon system at this point so let's get that one going notice i've uh, managed to get a small positive balance so let's um put these guys into active fleet oh just a little bit more so that's down to the older destroyers um, and here we have the good old Dusay class heavy cruiser so let's take one of those out Actually, let's do them all it'll only send us slightly negative maybe all of these I think that actually makes the whole fleet except for some corvettes active yeah i think we can stay in that for a few years particularly if we get a nice crisis that increases the funding again let's go to august see if anything comes up so i'm noticing some of these have unexpected advances but it's not actually bringing up a technology so i assume we've reached the the peak technology at that point Hoping that either the Soviet Union or Italy come good. Oh dear. <laughs> this uh, rebellion in Egypt has gone on for ages. I mean, a year or something now. We are probably lucky that we've not had more rebellions in our own French uh, empire. Or unexpected advances, but nothing happening from them. Oh, Germany's building a 12-inch coastal battery in the Baltic states. Still, yeah, up at 10. Germany and Italy have both been asking for more money for the Navy. And the Soviet Union reported to be halted construction of a carrier due to financial difficulties. Oh dear, what a shame. It is a shame, actually, because that probably puts a bit of a break on their um, willingness to go to war. And into December. So the first of our last batch of new construction enters service. Welcome, guys. Um, British offering to sell us stuff. Uh, yes, because we still want to stay best of buddies with Britain. So that's nice. Uh, the USA has stolen some technology. I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't want to get into the trouble, but I'm not having tensions go down either. <laughs> Britain's crushed uh, through the use of um, Soviet self-propelled guns. Ooh, the Soviet Union's halted constructions for battle cruisers and more CVs, so very much not going well. And still staying at 10. So that's it for the um, ultimate year of this game. God, that feels quite sad to say. Uh, if we have a little look at uh, the summary of the year, we've been gradually running down our finances to keep the fleet at a high state of readiness. We've had a few new technologies, even though we seem to have gone off the uh, scale. Tensions, well, we've had some lifts, but not as much as I'd hoped. The budget certainly recovered pretty well. I can't argue with that. We maintained our treaty with uh, our lovely British allies. Soviet Union at 10, Italy at uh, 8, I believe. Yep, 8. We've completed two destroyers, and so we just have this series of five light cruisers left. Um, and yeah, all to play for in the final year of this fantastic game. 35 years of gameplay, 34 completed. Uh, if you're still here, after 34 years, after, I think this is uh, episode 89. Wow. Thank you for accompanying me on this great journey. And I will see you next time for what I hope isn't the final episode, because I would love for a war to erupt and just to 
carried on for one last hurrah. Thanks, goodbye, and see you next time.